Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we are gonna be switching it up a little bit. It is the first Sunday of May, happy May everybody. I wanted to do a little tier list. We're gonna be ranking all of the regional forms in Pokemon today, something different, something fun. If you wanna see me do more of these tier lists in the future, be sure to leave a like on this video and let me know down in the comments section. With that being said, let's jump right into things. I feel like I've done this a couple times, just decided I want to post a video today, but not wasn't necessarily super sure of what it should be. So we're going to do a little tier list. I wanted to think of something a little bit, you know, not something you would see every single day. I'm going to title this in a way that'll get you guys to click on it, because I'll be honest, when I see tier list, I don't click on them. But we're going to do a tier list today. We're going to take a look at regional variants. These are only uh, forms of already existing Pokemon. So. If a regional variant evolves into a brand new Pokemon, for example, that Pokemon is not on this list because, well, it's not a regional variant. It's it's <laughs> it's just a new evolution. So these are Alolan Pokemon to Hisuian Pokemon with Galarian forms as well. And we're going to be going through all of them here. S to D, because there really are no F tier designs here. There was an F tier. I decided to change that. First off, Rattata and Raticate. These are both, you know, they're fine. Rattata is is very basic. There's nothing really interesting about him. I think Raticate is better, uh, but they're lower tier Pokemon. Uh, my opinion of them reflects the same way my opinion of Rattata as a Pokemon already is. So that's kind of where they land. It's nothing special with them. Raichu. I love Alolan Raichu. Little pancake looking dude. He is an S tier Pokemon. I use Alolan Raichu every single time I play through Sun and Moon or Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. They are awesome. I love the evolution. It is a better design than Raichu, in my opinion, the baseline Cantonian form. So Alolan Raichu goes in S tier. Similarly to Rattata and Raticate, Sandshrew and Sandslash are more favorable Pokemon for me. I love their base designs and I love their variants just as much. They are both, I would say, it's it pretty much reflects Rattata and Raticate. Sandshrew is a B tier design, Sand Slash is an A tier. I love the ice spikes that go along Sand Slash's back. I love the typing that it gets when it changes into this form. Sandshrew is like a little igloo looking guy. It's adorable. I love it. These guys, I don't love as much. I would say Alolan Vulpix. Uh, is a is a B tier Pokemon. I, I think it's cute. I think it, it doesn't change a ton of Vulpix's original design. It's almost like a color palette swap in a way. Nine Tails. Nine Tails has never done it for me, <laughs> and it remains the same with its Alolan form, which goes into C tier. Diglett base form is really boring and uninteresting. I I understand the 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 metal and lava plume you know lore of its hair but it just doesn't do enough with the base form for me to really rank it super high. Alolan Dugtrio, on the other hand, it's the same thing and it's a superficial thing, but I love the extent and the, the way they go with the hair on Dugtrio's heads. I love that they give each Dugtrio a different hair uh, style. I think that's really neat. And it's just a better done version of this, where it's just a little tuft on top, but they actually give them long flowing manes. So for that reason, I love Alolan Dugtrio. It is also on my list. These three, the Meowths and the the, Alol the Alolan Meowth and the Galarian Meowth. This one again is a D. Galarian Meowth is a B. I love Galarian Meowth. I love how different it becomes. I love that it evolves into a brand new Pokemon in Berserker. I think that's awesome. I'm really glad they did a bunch of different Meowth forms because it's a Pokemon you wouldn't necessarily expect. Persian is another one of those Pokemon that gets plopped right into the C tier. A lot of the dark type regional variants I'm not the biggest fans of. They're just very bland and uninteresting, to be quite frank. Growlithe and Arcanine, these are both amazing designs. Growlithe is a B tier. Arcanine is awesome. It is an A tier. Not only is the design of Hisuian Arcanine amazing and the fact that we finally got a regional variant that I think lives up to the hype, but the lore and all of the, the background information that we get for Galarian or Hisuian Arcanine in Pokemon Legends Arceus is wonderful. They incorporated into the story in a really wholesome way. I absolutely love what they did here. Geodude, Graveler, and Golem, these are all pretty easy. This is a D, this is a C, this is a D. They're not great. 
they're just uninteresting. The magnet piece and the it's interesting enough and it makes a, an interesting extrapolation of what the original Pokemon were, but it just doesn't grab me all too much. Ponyta is another case of Growlithe and Arcanine where Ponyta is fine. Rapidash is awesome. I love the changes they made to Rapidash. I love that they did something so drastic with it, essentially turned it into a unicorn with the, the horn and everything that's a different color than what it usually is. I like the type change as well to a fairy. I think it's awesome. I think the design's really cool. I love where they place it in the Galar region. Uh, I love that it essentially has its own little forest and town that reflects the same color palette and style as these Pokemon. I think it's really cool. Slowpoke. You know, it's interesting enough. Slowbro, it, it pops into C. I would honestly, honestly, I would probably pop it into B. I think it's a really simple design, but I think Slowpoke and Slowbro were always pretty simple designs. So to take something simple and make it interesting enough while not changing too much, I think is, is a feat that not everyone can accomplish. So for that, I give it a lot of credit. It's just a pleasant looking Pokemon. Farfetch'd, it's a big leak. There's nothing, there's nothing particularly special about it. I like that they changed the colors a little bit. It, it, the beak is a little bit longer. It's, an, it's a neat enough Pokemon. I like that they incorporated some lore from Galar into it, and I, I'm glad we finally got some new representation for this Pokemon. So I guess I would put it in C for that reason. Grimer and Muck, it's the dark type again. The dark type. It's not interesting. It's Muck is pretty cool. I love the different, the psychedelic look that Muck has. But Grimer, again, it falls into the same territory as Rattata, as Meowth, as Slowpoke, in that it's not changed enough, but the changes aren't interesting or clever enough to where it really does much for me. Voltorb and Electrode, a lot of people prefer Voltorb to Electrode. And it's interesting because I think they're pretty much the same. They're C-tier Hisuian forms. There was, a, I think... What we ended up getting with Electrode reflects poorly on Voltorb. I think this could have looked a lot better and it would have bumped up this design a lot more. But for whatever reason, they chose to go simple on both. And this is what it is. Of course, the classic Alolan Exeggutor is an A. Doesn't even need to be said anymore. It's so derpy. It's a dragon. Come on. Marowak is another awesome design. That also goes into A tier. The incorporation into the island culture of Alola is also awesome, and the fact that it is so heavily involved in one of the trials is another big benefit to Marowak. Also, the ghost type being a bit of a reference to Marowak in Generation 1 is also really neat. Overall, just a really good execution. Weezing, solid B-tier Pokemon. Not the biggest Weezing guy. It reflects on my opinion on this variant. I love the smoke stacks. I love that they incorporated Weezing into the architecture of the uh, of the town in Pokemon Legends Arceus into Jubilife Village. That was really neat as well. I loved to see that. Mr. Mime is kind of terrifying, but for that reason, I kind of love it. It's so weird. And Mr. Mime, they've really embraced just how strange of a Pokemon Mr. Mime is. And I'm really glad they continued with it. We get some evolutions here, some final starter forms. Typhlosion is awesome. It is the Pokemon I went with in Legends Arceus. I love that it got a ghost type. I love that they changed the flame colors and they it it just it's wispy, it's ghost-like. They just they didn't need to do anything radical because, like with a lot of these forms, Typhlosion wasn't the most complicated design, but they did enough. Slow King, you know, it's fine, it's B, it doesn't really do much for me. I don't really, I have not much to say about this Pokemon as a whole. Quillfish, this is a neat design. I love this redesigned Quillfish. I think it looks so much better than the original if they hadn't screwed up the evolution. Ugh, so tragic. Sneasel, again, A tier as well. I love the way this new Sneasel looks. It's just, it's so, it's just, the color palette is so well done. It's just a really neat looking design. Doesn't do too much, but it improves upon the base Sneasel, which is really good. Corsola, look at this. This is sick. This is awesome. This is an A tier design. The lore of the, the rotting coals and the references to real world climate change and all of the different things that get incorporated into Corsola here is great. And I love it when Pokemon goes down these dark routes with a lot of these designs. These Pokemon... They don't do much for me. <laughs> if I'm being generous, I would go this way. Zigzagoon, I think, is just cuter than Linoon. Samurott, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a tier. I, I, it's grown on me. 
it's grown on me. Let's go with that. I really didn't like it when it first got revealed when we saw the leaks and data mines, but since then, it's 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 grown on me a bit. Samurai is my favorite starter from Gen 5, so I have a soft spot for it in general. I love that it's um that its horn looks like really deformed and, and it's gr outgrowing in different ways that you wouldn't expect. I think that's really neat. Lilligant, nothing special. Darumaka, Darmanitan, and the other form of Darmanitan. Darumaka is adorable. It's going to get a B. This thing is weird. It's going to get a C. This one, same thing. You know, they're cool. They're neat enough. I like that they're incorporated into some of the snowier parts of the Galar region. We see them kind of hanging around. I think that's neat, but it doesn't really move me. Yamask is really cool. A lot of the interesting stuff with Runarigas, how it eventually evolves into the brand new Pokemon, I think is handled really well. The fact that you catch it and evolve it in two completely different areas of the Galar region, and it makes you explore the wild area a lot more, I think is really good game design. I'm really glad they gave these Pokemon evolutions because I didn't love them in Generation 5, but I ended up using Runarigas and Galarian Yamask on my team in my playthrough of Pokemon Shield, so I'm really happy with it. These two! Oh. I'm going to annoy people. This is a C tier. Zoro was not all that interesting as a regional variant. Zoro Arc, on the other hand, is a really sick one. I absolutely love what they did with it. I absolutely love, as I move away from my, my microphone, that they, they just, it looks so just rugged and ravaged, and it looks like it's scavenging on the outskirts of the Hisui region. It's already a harsh environment, and it's, I just love that they took a Pokemon that was so central to Generation 5, but was teased back in Generation 4 and gave it new forms in the Generation 4 remakes or the, the brand new Gen 4 game, if you will. I love that they did that. And I think the designs reflect that, especially Zoroark. This guy, he's just a derpy little C tier Pokemon. Nothing special about him. Braviary is awesome. That is another A tier design. Braviary and its its incorporation into the Mount Ride Pokemon of the region was also great. The fact that we learned a lot about its migratory patterns and its psychic typing and the the dress the the headdress that it has that reflects that psychic typing, I think it's a really really well done design. It's simple enough that it reflects the simplicity of a lot of Pokemon designs, but it has so much depth to that simplicity. I think it's really good. These two I've really grown on. Gudra and uh, Sligu, they're really solid. They are neat looking Pokemon. This is still, you know, it's fine. It's a C tier. Gudra is an A tier. I used one on my team. I absolutely love that they made it more of a snail-like design. I think that was a neat choice on the part of Game Freak. It's just a great Pokemon. I had a big one in my playthrough of Legends Arceus. I had an Alpha Gudra. It was the biggest guy on my team. It was so fun to play through. It was a tank when you were going through some of the later parts of that game. The designs are solid, and for that reason, they are on their list. Avalog is another A tier. Notice a lot of the Hisu of the um, the Hisuian forms are higher up on this list. I think they knocked it out of the park. Avalog and its incorporation into the story, having to face off against a massive Avalog near the end of the game, is just an incredible choice. And it's shocking because it's a Pokemon that obviously didn't exist in Generation 4, it was never associated with Gen 4, so to see it weaved into the lore of the region's past is really, really cool. Last of all, last but not least, Hisuian Decidueye. At the start, when they first got leaked, probably my least favorite form on this list. It's really moved up for me. Hisuian Decidueye is awesome, and it goes into that S tier of regional variants. It does not look good in 3D, <laughs> at least in the data mines. It looked really derpy, but once you saw it in action and once we got its official art, it completely grew on me. I absolutely love the color palette of red and brown, especially with its white underfur, its massive claws. So much about this Pokemon just screams ancient. It screams something that wouldn't exist in the modern day, but was able to thrive in a harsher world. I absolutely love this Pokemon, and I'm really glad that it exists. And when I do play through Legends Arceus for a second time, because I've only done it once so far, I am for sure going to be choosing this Pokemon. So that is my list. That is my tier list of regional variants. What do you guys think? I will leave a link to this tier list uh, page in the description down below if you guys want to make your own list. Tweet them to me at LinkyYT on social media. You can send me it. I'll, I'll retweet them. I'll take a look at them. I'll, I'll critique your critiques. It'll be fun. 
What do you think of mine, though? Do you agree with my list? Are there any things that are so uh, poorly placed that you are angry at me and you're going to unsubscribe? Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this tier list and you want to see more in the future, be sure to leave a like on the video. Make sure you turn that notification bell on so you never miss any future uploads. And with that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.